All right, so these are just some pictures based on like my position, what I think the ultimate setup is, um, and like, yeah, key things to take into consideration. So you can see here's a picture of me front on pretty narrow, and this is also the handlebars, which we'll go on to in a minute, but you can see angles leave it in quite a lot. So this is me front on, just cruising around the car park. Um, but you can see like hoods very angled in, that's literally just for aero, like I think it, for me, so someone would not, you can see not the widest of shoulders, um, it definitely helps a lot. And I think people might say, oh, you know, your elbows get tucked out, but the way you have it is if you like lock your arms in properly, they stay super narrow. And I think it's more like when you're in the bunch, you're just a little bit narrow, so you get a bit better draft off. And when you're on the front, obviously like you're just super aero anyway. So you can see like the front end of my bike, what super like E brakes, I would recommend them because they're half the weight of like Dura-Ace brakes, really good. The other option is Tri-Rig. I think Tri-Rig is almost a better option, but they're a lot more expensive than the, the EE brakes I managed to get, um, just because they're a bit more aero. Now, the thing I do want to clean up is my front end. It's, it's not great. I've got two cables, and you can see the one on the right is okay. Like, there's a little bit of exposure, but this one on the left, um, well, as you look at it, um, is my front brake. Basically, I just don't have a long enough cable because I changed stem lengths, but I think that if I could root it, or I can root it in the, in the handlebars and then coming out there in front of the head tube, that would be pretty neat. Obviously, not optimal, like it would be, it'd be nicer if it was, uh, if there was more internal routing and the cable as well doesn't go in at the head tube on the L's, it goes in the fork, which is a bit annoying. Um, you can also see super deep, deep section front wheels, which we'll see now. So I think that's the next point. The next point is your wheels. In my opinion, if you're racing, you should have at least 60 mil rims, um, unless you're racing like in the Alps. I don't really see any disadvantage there. As a small rider, like I don't really get blown around the wind that much on my MVs. Like, okay, you know, they're more than a box section rim, but in my opinion, like look at this guy's wheels. Like why would you just not get deep wheels? You go faster, you just grow up, you just ride them. They're just so much quicker, it's a joke. Like until you ride really deep wheels, like you just don't get it and then now i'm like yeah i need to ride really deep wheels at all times because honestly the difference is crazy so i recommend that as the biggest purchase like if you want to upgrade your bike get some deep section rooms so you can see here again like in the bunch and you know quite low compared to everyone else it's because i'm a small guy um again you can see like front on pretty pretty decent position um this is me climbing again like um we'll go actually we should have a side on picture somewhere okay yeah so here's a side on picture like me in the drops Decently aggressive position again, and I think that's the other thing. It's like being able to train yourself to ride in an aggressive position. Um, another thing that I think is really underrated is chainring size. I think if I had a race only bike, I'd definitely have a 55. Um, and you might say you don't really need a 55. The, my argument is this is like in a race, if it's a racing only bike, how many times are like, oh, my chainring is too small? Quite a lot. Like, oh no, sorry, it's too big. You never have that. I've never been like, oh, no, I would want a smaller one. It's like, but when it's like 60k an hour and it's just like, you have to ride at 105, 110k, it's just annoying. Like, why not have a 55? It also improves mechanical efficiency with the drivetrain because you're not in a small enough, uh, you're in a bigger sprocket at the back, better chain line, etc. etc. So I have a 5339, which I think is fine. Like, that's fine for training. I have an 1132 on the back. That's the other thing I think is really important is if you have an 1132 on the back, you stay in the big ring longer. And you might say that's kind of true of my last point being 55. And I think 55 is good for racing. Okay, training, not ideal. But if you have a 32, it just means you can stay in the big ring longer. Like, you know, if you're cross-chaining, you're then the 25 instead of the 28. And, you know, it's just, it just is better. So I would always recommend to have a 32. Um, the, the gaps really aren't too bad. In terms of tyres, again, I think, like, I have GP5000 tubeless on the rear. Don't actually run it tubeless because I just had some issues with the ME from just saying not tubeless. Front mission and power competition, 23 mil, which people think is too narrow, but actually on these rims, they come out 25 and they actually fit really well. So I'd also recommend the power cups. I really like them, good grip in the wet, really fast. So again, good tire. Group set, E-tap, um, I like it. I think it's good because there's less cables. So you see the front of my bike, so I've got two cables. If I had e, uh, if I had DI2, I'd have a lot more cables. In terms of like working, Rear one works fine, um, just, you know, obviously it's 11 speed, so you can use nice fast chains. Um, you can see it's like the new style one. They had two different styles. The old one's terrible, but the new style is good. Front shifter, it's fine. It's not unreal. It does the job. Um, and then you, like, saddle is just, is whatever. Um, and then the frame, like, obviously I assume people have seen this. It's an Els Vanyar. It's a pretty lightweight bike. 
not really the most error around. People are saying I should get an error bike. I might, and I might try and get an Elves error bike at some point, just see how it is. Um, but I'm really happy with the frame. Like, it just does the job. I had a TCR before. It feels as stiff. It handles nicely. Like, you, you know, there's nothing... There's nothing to it that makes me think it's a worse bike, really. So, um, yeah, that's basically my bike more or less uh, summed up, to be honest, for racing. I'd also say, like, bottles-wise, um, for racing, always good to have, like, 750, like Will has here. Just, you know, it's 250 grams extra at the beginning, but, you know, it just means that you can fit a bit more sugar in, you fit a bit more water in, you're all good. The other thing is... Just in terms of equipment, skin suit, this I had to race. I didn't have my Bristol skin suit, so I had to race another one, but I really need to have my jersey because it was a team competition. It was like a stage race, so I had to wear the jersey. But yeah, I think in the UK, okay, in the summer it's a bit grim because the UK summer, surprisingly, can get warm. And like, it's nice to have short sleeves, but I just think it's quicker. Like just full TT skin suit, gels in the back, the ultimate setup, overshoes, I normally run, I don't because they're sort of broken at the moment, but otherwise aero socks, obviously. Quick rescues, you can also go for like really, I've got a small one at the front and like a decently big size one at the back. Not sure it's the biggest issue, but again, it's like not a terrible one to sort of think about changing. We can get the ones where the Allen's, Allen key screw in. Because to be honest in the UK, like if you get a puncture, like cheerio, like your race is done. So it doesn't really matter that much in my opinion, like having a, a screw on one, like and also, you normally, you just don't get any punch in the race. Um, and last off is obviously a wax chain. Like, a wax chain, obviously, I sell them. Link in the description if you're interested. But it's not a sales pitch, this video, really. But the reason it's just good is it's just quicker. It's just, like, guaranteed to be quicker than basically any loop. You don't have to mess around about, oh, is my chain fast? Like, mm, you just whack a wax chain on the day before a race. Renewal round that breaks it in fastest chain around keeps it clean nowhere you know it just makes life so easy as someone who cannot be bothered to clean their bike very often it's honestly a game changer so again wax chain really really highly recommend um do yourself buy from me whatever you want to do um but yeah that's pretty much it i think i might have some other photos here or there um that's me on the tt bike this is me again just riding but similar position this is my hill climb setup slightly different but we can go through that another day if you want and there's me winning the race. You can just see, like, from, I guess, the front angle again, like, pretty decent setup. I've got, like, 36 centimeter bars. Um, you can see not too many cables or anything. It's quite quite a clean setup. Um, but obviously not as clean as this BMC behind. Like, that is, that is a pretty nice setup the man has there as well. So, anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoyed this quick video. And I'll see you in the next one.